Well, hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Welcome into this Adobe Illustrator tutorial where today we're going to talk about global color and why you should use it and what's so great about it. Now, if you enjoy this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss any Adobe Illustrator or graphic design related tutorials in the future. Let's jump into Adobe Illustrator right now and check this thing out. All right, all right, here we are in Adobe Illustrator and we have some line art in front of us that we want to color. This is supposed to be a watermelon and we want to make it look like a watermelon and we're going to use global color to do that, create a color palette and build out and adjust these colors to just make this thing just like we want it to be. So what's the fuss with global color? Well, part of the cool thing about global color is that when you create an object, like let's say we create a square here and we're building out a little color scheme. We have this sort of teal aqua green color. Well, if this was a global color, anytime we change the global color here in our color swatches area, this would automatically update no matter where it's being used across our document, which of course can be incredibly helpful if you have, you know, a hundred different sort of pieces to a, a piece of art that you're creating and the client decides they want you to change every black to a very dark purple or something like that. Well, Instead of having to go recolor all kinds of stuff, you would simply double click on the swatch here in the swatches panel and adjust that global color. Now, this right now is not a global color. So how do we make it a global color? Well, there's a bunch of different ways you can save a swatch. You can just drag this right here out of the bottom of the tool bin, right into the swatches uh, area, and there we go, it's a swatch. However, it's not a global swatch. We're gonna double click on this swatch, and you can see my swatch options come up. I'm working in CMYK, by the way. CMYK, from what I've heard, I tend to work in it. It's it's really great for color. Um, sometimes I'll mess around in RGB, but CMYK is a really good place to live. I've watched and, and looked and read a lot of stuff that Von Glitchka does. He swears by working in CMYK, and he's been doing it for decades at this point. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Um, and it's it, the nice thing about it is if you build a an illustration or a logo or something in CMYK, it's very easy to convert it to RGB. But if you build something out in RGB, you're going to have a pretty big shift in color when you switch back to CMYK. So I figure, go at it, get great looking color in CMYK, and then RGB will just be good as gold. So I'm going to build this here in CMYK, and uh, well, it is what it is. I'm going to round these just kind of the nearest number. So I'm going to go 60, and I'm going to say, I'll pull this up to like 45, and let this be our number. Now I'm going to tick on global, and I'm going to hit OK. Now notice what happens with this global swatch. We get this little white bar looking area in the bottom corner. That's just letting us know, yep, this is a global color. So let's say I have a hundred of these little uh, squares out here all over the document and we're for some reason we've decided that this looks good. And the client says, yep, nope, we don't like the teal. We want this to be purple. Now remember all these teals in here, despite the fact that it's the same uh, color, it's not, the, it's not from that global color swatch, so it's not going to be changed here. All we need to do is double click on the global color swatch and change this. So we can say, look, we actually want to make this, uh, we want to make this maybe like a yellowish color. So we'll go yellow. And if I tick on preview, you're going to see we actually get an update of all the graphics that will change. I'm going to tick off preview and just hit OK. And a few things happen. Number one, the artwork updates, but also the swatch and the swatches panel updates as well. Now you can replace a global colors contents by alt or option dragging from any of the swatches that you have in your panel. So I could say, you know what, we actually want these to be hot pink, so I'll hold down my alt or option key, drag and drop on top of that global color swatch, global color swatch updates, and so does all the artwork associated with it. This can be particularly useful if you bring a reference photo into Illustrator and you're using the eyedropper tool and sampling colors off of that reference photo. You can, let's say we, we, we've we just sampled this green, right? I can hold down, drag this swatch, hold down my alt or option key, drop it on top of that global color, and you can see everything now becomes that green. So if we sample that really dark background color, we could do the same thing there. We could sample the color here from the stroke. We could just swap it right to the foreground there, pull down alter option and say, yeah, we actually want you to be the global color, and everything would update. So if you're kind of exploring color and basing off of some old design that you found in a magazine or a poster or something, or you have a photograph that you're looking to copy the general color palette from, it's really easy to do it and apply it across a, a big illustration if you're using global color. And also, by the way, if you have global colors in a gradient that's in your artwork, that stuff will update as well. And let me actually show you where this can be particularly useful. Let's drag one of these rectangles out, and we're going to give this a gradient. So we're going to say, yeah, gradient. We're going to apply a gradient here. Uh, we're going to drag this color swatch and drop it in here. And uh, I'm going to just add a second green color swatch. I'm going to drag away the black. And then what we can do with, with a global color, not only do you have the color, but you have 100 different types of tint for that color. 
So we can adjust the tint, and you can see it's referencing cyan 59, yellow 43, magenta, and black both at zero. But most importantly, we know that it's referencing our global color. So we could say, yeah, this color stop over here, we're going to make this almost white, like a very super light minty tint, and we have this gradient. Now what happens when we update our global color? Well, let's just double click and let's make it uh, like a yellow or something. When we hit preview, the gradient updates both the solid, you know, just right on 100% tint of that global color, but also the very super light tint of the global color. So if I make this pink, over here is going to be just a super light pink. So it's really, really powerful when you begin mixing global colors and playing with the tints. There's so much you can do with global colors. It's really, really a thing of beauty. So I'm just going to select all these shapes here. Let's try to colorize our watermelon here. Oops, I don't want to get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to just select these few squares and let's build out a color palette here. So the way I like to do this is just use squares. So I'm just going to drag out a square. I know that I want a background color. I want a color for the rind of my watermelon and then another color for like the internal rind. And then I want another color that'll be the watermelon flesh. And then I might go with like just a red pinkish color and a light blue color for some of these sort of floating dots that are floating around our illustration. So we have what, four, five, six different colors we need to build out. So here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and delete this global color, just get rid of it. And we're gonna choose new swatch here from the swatches panel. And what's gonna happen is Illustrator is gonna take the selected color that we have. So right now we've selected that object. There's the fill color. This is what it's saying. Yeah, you want this as your swatch, right? Well, not really. We want to make a background color here. So I'm gonna make sure global is ticked on number one. And we're just gonna go with even numbers. So I want this to be heavy magenta. So I'm gonna go like uh, 85. And I'm gonna push the cyan up as well. We'll go 85 for that. Uh, yellow, we're gonna drop this down to like 20. And we want this to be relatively dark. So I'm gonna say like 50 here in the black channel. You know, I'm gonna make it darker than that. We're gonna say 75, something like that. And I'm gonna hit okay. So right now we have a global color. This would be sort of our background color. Now we're gonna go ahead and create a nice rich green. This will be sort of the darkest green in the illustration, the, the sort of rind of our watermelon. So once more, I'm going to choose create a new swatch. It's going to pick up that same teal. That's fine. But we want to kind of explore here. We want to go with a, just a very, very rich green. So I'm going to push yellow to 100 and probably cyan, uh, cyan almost to 100. Maybe we'll drop cyan at about 75. And I'm going to leave magenta. Magenta is the opposite of green. So I'm going to leave that at 0%. And I want this to be pretty bright. Well, maybe not quite that bright. Maybe we'll push it to about 20, something like that. And we'll hit OK. So there's the rind of the watermelon. Now we're going to select the next color. This is going to be sort of the fleshy, almost yellowy internal of the watermelon. So we're going to push cyan down to like 10. Uh, we're going to leave magenta at 0. And with the yellow, I'll probably push this up to 50. And I might drop cyan down even to 0, something like that. Ooh, I think the yellow should be less. Let's push that down to like 35. Something like that I think is good. And we'll hit OK. That actually might need to be a little bit less saturated even than that. But that's fine. We can play with that later. Next, we're going to create a nice, rich, almost pink red color for the flesh of the watermelon. So again, new swatch. Uh, we will drop cyan all the way down. Cyan and red are opposites, so we know we want red. And then I'm going to push this up, and I'm going to slide yellow up until I start to get... I almost want this... You can see how it's almost pink-red color. I kind of like that. Now, that's too too pink. If I, you know, if I push that up and push this slightly toward red a little bit more, maybe something like that will work. We'll go ahead and hit OK. So that'd be sort of the flesh of the watermelon. Maybe it's too red, not pink enough, but that's all right. And you know what? I think we won't be doing uh, a red dot. We'll just use whatever the color of the watermelon is. And then we're going to just create a light blue here. So once more, I'm going to say new global color swatch. And this is just going to be a nice light blue. So we'll go something kind of like this. And we can always choose a tint of it if we like. So this is kind of the color scheme that we've developed. And we're ready to begin applying it to colors here in our document. So let's begin with the underlying green shape. We can just select the stroke, get rid of the stroke, select the fill, hold down our eyedropper or I should say select the eyedropper tool by hitting the letter I and just sample that really dark green. And you can see what I've selected is some kind of semi-transparent multiply blend mode something. Let's just shut that off real quick. We wanna get, we wanna get to the original nitty gritty here. So let's, uh, let's grab, here it is. This is the original artwork. And I'm gonna say, yep, go ahead and fill that with green. It's gonna take a second. It's gotta rebuild an outer glow, that's fine. But there is the rind of our watermelon. We'll select the next shape in, and this is going to be sort of the yellow fleshy part of the watermelon. and Or I'm sorry, this sort of the inner rind. And then the next is going to be the red fleshy part of the watermelon, just like that. And then we want to go ahead and apply a nice green color to this half of the watermelon. This is sort of going to be a half of the watermelon that's covering um, the watermelon to, to give it more of a rounded shape. So once more, we'll apply that green to this. 
And I'm going to shut this other shape off on top here. And we have our basic watermelon shape. Uh, I am going to go ahead, what's this here? These are these kind of squiggly lines. Uh, we're going to apply the dark green to that as well. Now you can see, well, they're just blending right in because they're the same color as our rind. That's fine. We're going to be creating a gradient here with our global colors uh, to kind of offset that in just a second. I can actually scroll down here. I'm going to unlock my background layer. Let's select our background, grab our eyedropper tool, and just give this the new background color. And with that, I think I'm going to do some seeds, the background color, and some seeds will be a white, and some will be the red of the watermelon flesh. So we'll go ahead here. I'm going to select this big middle seed, and I'm going to collapse my properties panel for a quick second just to get it out of the way. And then I'm going to select maybe this little seed, and what would it be? Would it be this one? Nope, it's not that one. I'm just shift-clicking these circles, by the way, here to select multiples. Nope, not that one. There we go, it's that one. So these three, I'm going to color these the same color as the background. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to select this, this little seed, and maybe this one here. Yeah, and we'll make these the same red as the watermelon flesh. They're going to disappear, but we're going to change that in a second. You'll see how we change it. And then I'm going to select the last two little seeds here. And these guys are going to be white, but I'm really going to make them the really light yellow of the inner rind. And we can see there they go. They look good. What we can do to keep this linked to that global color, if we want them to be super close to white, well, just change the tint, right? So we could say, we still want to be a little bit of that yellowy color in there. Let's just make this like a 10 or 12. I'll punch in 10 manually. 10% tint. And there we go. For all intents and purposes, they look totally solid white. Now here's where some of the magic begins. This is where we can both use tints and gradients to really mess around and play with this and bring some shape into this. So I'm going to first begin with the underlying rind and we're going to say, yeah, we actually want to apply a gradient here. So I can drag my color stop into the gradient editor here and it's going to show up in there. I'm going to start getting rid of these other color stops and I'm just going to drag out a second one of these color stops. I'll drag and get rid of the other sort of aqua green. Then we'll go ahead and we'll just adjust this gradient. I'll bring this center slider over to right around 50%, maybe a little less than 50%, maybe 45%. I'll select the color stop all the way over here to the right, and we'll just change the tint up here. We'll change it to like, I don't know, let's see what 75 looks like. And that doesn't look too bad. Maybe I'll just, um, I'll punch it back to like 60 maybe. And you can see how it's really giving this gradation. In fact, I think I'm going to drag this color stop back to extend that a little bit further toward the sort of halfway point of my watermelon, just like that. And then we would pretty much do the same with the red flesh here. Uh, we're going to add this red color to our gradient, and I can begin dragging away my green color stops. Let's just add a second of those red color stops. And once more, I'll drag this red color stop over. I'm going to drag this green color stop to, or I'm sorry, the, the middle red color stop to about the 50% location, maybe a little less than 50. I'll select the color stop over to the right, and we'll just change the tint here. So I'll reduce this. I want to be careful. I don't want my, my, my flesh to look orange. Uh, I still want it to definitely have a reddishness to it, but I want it to just be offset a little bit from the fleshiness that's back here. So maybe we'll drop it down. We'll go like 85 even, something like that. That looks pretty cool. And then what we'll probably have to do to make the seeds stand out a little more, I'm going to lock my background layer here so I don't accidentally damage it, to make these seeds stand out a little more, they probably should be a little darker, but I think I'm just going to use my tint here and just make them a touch brighter. So we'll go push these to like 90 as well. Just they're going to, It's going to make them stick out a little bit more, and they'll be sort of the subtle, not quite so noticeable seed in there. All right, cool. That's good. Let's grab this half of our watermelon, and we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to apply and get that same lighter green, what was that, 65% on the gradient. Let's just try taking our eyedropper tool and just sampling that gradient. Now I accidentally sampled the yellow. We don't want that. We want the green. You can see it's going side to side. We actually want this to go up and down. So we're going to go 90 degrees and let's maybe just stretch this guy back out entirely. Something like that. And you can see what's happening is now we're starting to be able to see some of that texture of that darker green appear. And of course, one of the things you're probably noticing is this weird looking little line there. That's actually a little highlight I've got. Uh, we're going to select our stroke here and we will give this that same green global color. So I can use my eyedropper tool. I can just sample it, but then I'll just have to swap fill and strokes. So I'll just hit shift and the X key. That's going to swap my fill and my stroke. Now we've got this green as our stroke. We can't really see it. So I'm going to take the tint of this and just crank it way up to like, I don't know, let's go 10%. Again, nearly white. We'll go to our properties panel here. And we'll say stroke. Actually, let's open up the stroke entirely. Let's give this a round cap. And I don't know, make this a 10-point stroke, something like that. It should be pretty noticeable for us. I'll go ahead here and deselect. And yeah, there we go. And because it's a tint of the green, if we decide to change this and make it a blue watermelon for whatever stupid reason, we can do that. And we won't have to worry about our tint looking out of place. 
So now let's go ahead, let's select a couple of these shapes here. Some of these shapes should be green, some should be white, some should be red, some should be blue. So I'm going to select these two. Let's make these uh, green. I'm going to select this one here, and I will select this little guy out here, and maybe this big one up here, and we'll make these red. Or again, we're sampling our global colors. Then I'll select uh, this guy here, and this little one here, and this one right here, and we'll make these blue. Finally, we're going to use our blue global color. Cool. And last but not least, we'll select the final two, and we'll make these that really light yellow. But I'm probably specifically going to come in and give these a tint. Now look at the color panel. Look at this. All that tinting stuff went away. Where did it go? Well, what we're looking at is actually the non-existent stroke. So if we select the fill, here we go, tint. And let's push this all the way up. We'll push it up to like 10% as well, something like that, basically making it a solid white. So at this point, we have our colors. We got some gradients in here. We have some stuff that's going on. But what if we look at it and it's like, ah, the green isn't quite right. The red isn't quite right. The, the yellow should really be a little bit whiter. Uh, how do we start changing this? Well, let's go to our green first here. Actually, let's go to our background. Maybe the background should be less saturated and a little darker. Double click on that. And we can say, look, yeah, make the background a little darker. We can even preview this so we can see exactly what it looks like. Let's take this to 90. And let's say uh, a little bit more yellow in there, something like that. Let's push this down to 80. Nope, 80 is not right. 85 is probably about right. And hit OK. Great. We've updated the background color. All right, let's double click on green here. And let's push this up. Can we make it more green? Let's turn preview on. And remember, this is going to update everything, even our gradients, because everything is a version of our global color here. I'm going to make this a brighter green. No, maybe I should make it a darker green. Maybe I should pull the cyan back out of it a little bit. That looks like a bad watermelon. It's kind of yellowish, right? If I push some magenta into there, no, that just kind of muddles things. Maybe I should just make it brighter. And there might just be a limitation on how green we can make this thing look here with the CMYK color space. So we'll, we'll push and we'll pull and we'll try to get it as nice as we can. Push that to 90. Maybe I'll make it a little bit darker here. I push it to like 30. That's kind of cool. I'll hit OK. I'll live with that. And let's try to make the yellow part of the fleshy rind a little bit less yellow. So we'll just take the yellow and say, yeah, yellow, you know what? Stop being quite so yellow. And uh, let's preview that and see what that looks like. That's actually pretty nice. Maybe we'll take it down to 15 and maybe make it just a little bit darker. We'll go like 5 in the K department. Hit OK. There we go. It's a little more washed out, but I think it kind of works for us all the same. Let's go over to the red. Let's see if we can make this a little bit more red. So we'll push more yellow into it. Let's preview it so we can see what we're getting here. Now you can see this makes the tint a bit more orange. If we increase the cyan a little bit, what does that do? That just kind of browns us out. What if we darken it a little bit by adding some K? Ooh, that actually kind of looks nice. We'll push this up to about 20 or so. That's kind of neat. Let's try to scale back on the yellow a little bit. And actually, I'll push the K back to like 10%. I think something like that's nice. There's before, there's after. We just make it a little bit more like watermelon fleshy colored. And last but not least, if we just wanted to take the blue and say, you know what, uh, be crazy blue or be super duper light blue, kind of something like that. We probably wouldn't want that because we want to really be able to differentiate our dots out here from the white dot. So those blues are very obvious. So we could just make that a very rich blue and hit OK. So you can really tell here, using these global colors, we just have an immense amount of control and editability later on to come back to a document that has tons of different layers with the colors spread out. We're just working from a single color palette. And because they're all global colors, we go ahead and change one of them and just everything is going to change across the board. So if the client said, yeah, we don't want the green watermelon, we would like the watermelon to be maybe more of a blue type watermelon. Have you ever, have you seen one of them? We've got these blue watermelons are really cool. And we can say, okay. And they say, yeah, but not only that, the flesh of the blue watermelon is kind of orangey. So we'd say, okay, sounds weird. Not sure that it's my type of watermelon, but uh, you, know, you say the word and I'll, I'll make it happen. So then we go with like this blue and yellowy orangey looking watermelon there we go and hit okay and it's just the whole point is it's just super easy to go in and make these big color changes and oh by the way all the little dots change around the watermelon to reflect the color style uh, which you're working with so just global color it's an awesome thing so that, ladies and gentlemen, is Global Color in Adobe Illustrator. It's really super useful and incredibly versatile. Once you start using it, you really just, well, you really can't go back. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any other Photoshop or Illustrator, really, or graphic design related tutorials in uh, the future. And if you're into Discord, check out our Discord, chat discord.me slash tutvid. There's a link down in the bio for that. And if you're into Instagram, well, of course, check me out over on Instagram at tutvid. We do a live show and all kinds of artwork sharing stuff, and it's just a whole bunch of fun in general. So for colors and tints and CMYK stuff and why global color is just really, really great, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Ludson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day.
Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.